Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about radar waveforms. So, different types of radar systems are there, like pulse wave, pulse radar system, CW radar system, FMCW radar system, and MTA radar system and pulse Doppler radar system. Each and every radar system is classified based upon the type of transmitting wave. <coughs> Suppose if you are transmitting a pulse waveform, the type of radar system is known as pulse radar system. If you are transmitting a continuous wave, that is known as continuous wave radar system, CW radar system. If the same continuous waveform is being modulated in the frequency, then that type of waveform is known as, that, that type of uh, radar system is known as FMCW radar system. Likewise, we have different radar systems are classified based upon the type of the transmitting section we have used. That means type of the waveform we are transmitting. <coughs> okay, so in the radar systems here, the first concept we are going to discuss pulse radar system. Pulse radar system. So pulse radar system, the name clearly tells that this radar system uses a pulse waveform as a transmitting signal. So why we are using the pulse waveform and how it is going to be used to detect the signal, radar signals from the object. Uh, it is having pulse. What is the difference between pulse and the square waveform? Square waveform is having 50% duty cycle whereas pulse waveform is not having 50% like 30% or 20% it is having duty cycle other than 50%. That means on period of this one is very small and very high off period. Again, on period is very small and high off period. So, the pulse width is very very narrow pulse width and this one is the off time period where we are waiting for the target echoes. Okay, what is the, pro what is the actual thing going on here in the pulse waveform is the transmitting antenna transmits the signal pulse in such a way that this is the waveform that is being transmitted and hit by this object. Whenever the target hits this signal, again the reflected signal traveled back towards the radar system. That signal will be reflected back in the to the radar system in this particular off period. Okay, somewhere around here the reflected echo signal will be received by the radar system. Okay, so this is the way how the pulse waveform has being used to is being used to detect the object. So let us see even uh, through an animation. Let us understand how this process is going on. See this the blue color shadow line that is going towards the target that is nothing but the transmitted signal. Now after some time the signal will be reflected back towards the object. See parallelly the waveform is also shown here. The transmitted signal is having high strength. This is the transmitted signal. This is the transmitted signal. The received signal is getting back by the radar system after some time. So this is the time where we are having the received signal and this is the transmitted signal. So this is the received signal Rx. Okay, so by seeing this uh, waveform animation, we can understand that the transmitted signal originated from the radar system. This is the radar system. Okay, and that signal goes into the free space whenever the object is there. Suppose uh, one object is there, the signal touches this object and the signal will be scattered into the many directions. So, part of the signal will be reflected back towards the radar system. So, that signal will be collected back by this radar system after some time t. Okay. So, if you see the characteristics of radar waveforms, the transmitted signal power is in terms of watts, kilowatts or megawatts of peak power. See this. The power we have megawatts of power. This is the transmitted signal and the pulse width is very very shortest pulse width I told you already. So the width of the pulse is very narrow and it waits for the echo signal for long period. So off period is very high. So the width of this one is around uh, 1 millis, uh, one microsecond pulse width 
TP is around 1 microsecond. Okay. And the time period T for this entire waveform which we are transmitting into the free space that is given by 1 millisecond. 1 millisecond. And the power, peak power that is given in terms of megawatts of power. Megawatts of power like 1 megawatt, 2 megawatt, 3 megawatt like that. Okay. And the duty cycle, see here, the duty cycle is very, very, very less. I told you already, duty cycle is 50% per uh, square waveform. But here in this case, the duty cycle is just 0.001, very, very narrow on period. What is the formula of duty cycle? Duty cycle is equal to T on by T on plus T off, nothing but total time period. So, T on is very, very shortest pulse like 1 microsecond by 1 millisecond. Time period is 1 millisecond. Okay. So, that's why it is 0 0.001 value. Okay. Visual cycle is very, very low. And coming to the received echo signal, the received echo signal will be received after T seconds. This is the time period that which the signal will be reflected back and collected by this radar system. This is the time. That means after T seconds, it the signal will be collected back by the radar system and it is around the strength of the received echo signal is having 10 power minus 12 watts. I told you in the first video when I was discussing the introduction of radar system, the received echo signal strength is around minus 13 watts. Okay, minus 13 or minus 12 watts. It is around in that value only. Okay, whatever the transmitted signal, the transmitting signal is having megawatts of power, 1 megawatt and the received signal power is 10 power minus 13 watts. See the difference. We are transmitting megawatts of power which is 1 into 10 power 6 watts. But the received signal is around 10 power minus 13 watts, very weak echo signals we are receiving. Okay, that's why immediately after receiving, we need to process the signal further to get the waveform boosted. So that we can do some experiments on that to calculate the time and velocity and whatever the required parameters we are going to calculate that we can get by just amplifying the signal at the primary stages. So, once the transmitted pulse is emitted by the radar is sufficient length of time must elapse to allow any echo signals to return and be detected before the next pulse may be transmitted. What is the main significance of giving that much of off period instead of uh, on period? On period is very very less I told you off period is very high because we need to wait for the reflected echo signal for some duration until we need to get the echo from the target. Okay. Suppose if we don't specify that much of off period, the reflected echo signal may not be in the same cycle, it may be in the after next cycle. Suppose I, you may not understand what I am saying, see here. Suppose instead of taking a long off period, I am taking very shortest off period. Okay, This is the off cycle I have taken. Now what is the problem with this? This signal is transmitted signal, this signal is transmitted and the echo target is located at a very long distance. The signal will go into the free space and reflected back towards the radar system. But that within the before reaching the echo to the radar system, meanwhile, if we don't provide more off period, meanwhile what happens second cycle may be transmitted. Okay. Do you understand this? We are transmitting the signal. We are transmitting the signal and waited for some time. Before the second pulse arrival only, we need to get the echo signal. Suppose if we don't give that much of off period and wait uh, and the echo signal, the target is located at long distance. Meanwhile, the second signal, second pulse may be transmitted and after this, the signal may be received. Okay, this should not be the case. It, that leads to an ambiguous target identification. Okay, we don't know whether the echo signal is due to this pulse or this pulse. That will be an unambiguous case. Okay, so that's why before the transmission of second pulse only, we need to get the receive signals within this first cycle only. That's why we need to give very high off periods. Okay, so the rate at which the pulses may be transmitted is determined by the longest range at which targets are expected. If the pulse repetition frequency is too high, 
echo signals from some targets might arrive after the transmission of next bulb. So, ambiguous may be ambiguous in measuring the range. So, unambiguous, ambiguous. Ambiguous means confusion. Unambiguous means no confusion. So, the echo, if the echo is received within the same first cycle, then there is no ambiguity. So, unambiguous targets. If the target is, if the target echo is received after the transmission of second pulse, then that may be ambiguous target. Okay. So, to avoid such cases, we need to give more of periods. So, let us see what is the formula for this maximum unambiguous range. Maximum unambiguous range. See, before going into the calculation part, just we can uh, imagine what could be this value. Let's see this value. We know R is equal to CTR by 2. We know this formula. In the first video, when I was explaining the introduction of this radar systems, I have given you the range to the target R is equal to CTR by 2 by just taking the formula distance is equal to time into velocity. Okay, So, R is equal to CTR by 2. 2R, 2R, if 2 goes on to this side, 2R, 2R is nothing but distance traveled by the electromagnetic signal between radar system and the target and C is nothing but velocity of light and TR is the time taken by the signal to reach the radar system. Now, I am taking the waveform here. See, the, what is the pulse period from here to here? This is pulse period. Okay, now what could be the range that the echo signal should be in unambiguous range? If the echo is generated after the transmission of second pulse, then that echo is known as ambiguous echoes. If the echo is generated within the first cycle, then that echo, that target is known as unambiguous target because it has no confusion. Okay, this echo, this echo is completely due to this pulse. If echo is not generated here and is generated after the transmission of second pulse, then we don't know this echo is due to this one or this one, first pulse or second pulse. That is a confusion. So, without any confusion up to which range we can say until this particular part, that means up to this TP. Up to this time period TP, we can say the target is completely due to the first pulse only. Okay. So, in place of TP, in place of TR, if you substitute TP, then the maximum unambiguous range could be CTP by 2 or else you can also write it as R unambiguous is equal to C by 2 FP, 1 by FP is nothing but TP. So, the range beyond which the target appears as the second time around echoes is called maximum unambiguous range. Maximum unambiguous range. You see here. During this, I have transmitted first pulse and second pulse. For first pulse, I don't have, I don't received, I don't receive any signal. I don't receive any echo signal. After the transmission of second pulse, I have received the echo signal. Okay, now we don't know this echo is due to first one or second pulse. First pulse or second pulse. So, such type of uh, echoes are known as ambiguous echoes or second time around echoes. So second time around echoes means after the transmission of second pulse, we have got this echo. Okay, so the range beyond which the target appears as the second time around echoes. So after this, we are calling these echoes as second time around echoes. So, the range beyond which the target appears as second time around echoes is called maximum unambiguous range. So, beyond this range, we call them as maximum unambiguous range. So, that is equal to C by 2 FP. <coughs> so, if we draw the graph between the pulse repetition frequency and unambiguous range, this is the graph. So, as long as we increase the pulse repetition frequency, the unambiguous range decreases. See the relation. So, see this relation. If we increase the pulse repetition frequency, what happens to the unambiguous range? Decreases. Okay, by, both are opposite to each other. One increases, second one decreases. So, that is the reason for this graph. Okay. Thank you.